Hi, my name is Joe Massey. I'm here to give a little tour of our Sardis Secondary Farm. Uh, come on with me, I'll show you around. So, when you first arrive at the Sardis Farm, you're going to come into the parking lot here and it's bordered by what we call our edible landscape. So landscapes are usually designed to be beautiful and this is no exception, I think. So that's our edible landscape. I'll come over here and I'll show you where we keep our supplies. Okay, so uh, this is an important place. This is our hand washing station, especially during COVID. It's especially important to be able to wash your hands, obviously. With soap. Come here, uh, they come and they have to wash their hands. Of course, they leave as well. We have a hot water tank inside this bin that provides hot water for hand washing, which is a food safe requirement. Up above here, you can see the installment there is for a fridge. So we have refrigeration, a large walk in fridge that we can store produce in in the summertime. And then right over there in the corner is a little black pipe sticking out of the ground, and that's where our uh, sandpoint well is that goes down 100 feet into the ground and supplies irrigation for the whole farm. So this is a very important part inside the bin. We have a controller with all our irrigation zones and we can control up to, I think, 14 different zones for irrigation. Uh, we'll continue on this way. Uh, the next bin over, our pink bin right here is for all of our supplies in terms of our machinery and the lawn tractor and all the tools we need for students and for ourselves to manage the farm on a regular basis. So we have lots of storage for that kind of stuff. We keep it organized well and that way we know where to find things. spot right behind me here is just kind of a grass field right now but uh, last year it actually grew nine giant pumpkins that were used for uh, displays for Halloween uh, for uh, our school and at Sardis Secondary as well as some middle and elementary schools uh, and our long-term vision for this is to put a Aboriginal medicine wheel uh, for students to come and uh, learn about uh, Aboriginal education and to connect their learning that way. Uh, let's keep on going over this direction Never mind, these are just my children playing here. Hi Quinn, hi Levi. Hi Pippa de Bobba de Gog. Four of my children and my dog. Um, this is a really interesting area. This is our perennial area. So we have a number of different plants. You recognize maybe artichokes here, which are an interesting one to grow, especially in the Fraser Valley. Moving on, we have lavender, asparagus, rhubarb. Um, Time, other herbs, that sort of thing. Uh, we'll carry on though. Every time we come to one of these poles with wrapped in blue duct tape, that represents an irrigation zone. So down here I can connect into the irrigation lines and that uh, allows me to feed. You can see the irrigation coming out and I can program that to come on uh, whenever I want to irrigate our different gardens. So continuing on here. See, we actually uh, have sunflowers. We didn't actually plant those, but they just look so nice that we decided we'll have, uh, we leave them uh, to grow and just uh, kind of decorate the farm. As well in the ground here, this is a crop we planted last October, and that's a, that's a garlic, which uh, it looks kind of dead on top, but this is the delicious part down here. So we have lots of garlic. Uh, this whole area is from uh, a planting last October. And now we head into the main part of the garden. So I'll just back up here for a second. And behind me is, uh, is our main part of our garden where we grow all different vegetables, as many different kinds as we can. And uh, the usual purpose of that is for a CSA program we run, Community Supported Agriculture. This year, uh, because of COVID, we didn't get enough crops in the ground in time to run it for the summertime. And so uh, we have a whole bunch of students here this summer uh, working hard planting crops. Uh, and we plan to run a CSA starting in September when school kicks off again with our agriculture classes. So we'll just walk through the gardens and kind of look around. We have squash and zucchini over here just kind of starting. Uh, these, this area is not planted yet. Here we have the brassicas, some celery, onions, leeks, chives, uh, some lettuces, one little row of carrots. That's all I can get in this year. Uh, and this is kind of a special one for me uh, because we had no students this spring, but I brought my kids here and we managed to get a few crops in the ground such as 
some really nice potatoes, which are now ready to harvest. And so we'll, uh, we'll take a few of these home for dinner tonight. Well, tomorrow, anyway. You can see we got some really nice uh, red potatoes. This one's called a red Pontiac. And we had uh, four or five varieties in all, actually. Um, and so that's great. Well, home with us. This area behind, students are getting ready to plant. They'll be planting this uh, Tuesday and Thursday this week. That's when they come to the farm. And then on behind you over here, as you can see, this stuff hasn't come up yet. This was all planted last week. So I'm expecting that within, a, you know, the next few days, we're going to start getting some of our first crops up. Things like our radishes and that sort of thing. And uh, the whole garden here has been planted and this will be for our CSA program uh, next uh, September, this coming September. More irrigation. We have one crop at the farm that is more of a conventional style. This is a lot more um, kind of like backyard gardening, that part of the, the farm. But this behind me is our one sort of more conventional style, which is corn. And I get a local farmer to help me plant that with his tractor. And our corn is looking great. Looks like it's about getting close to four feet high now. And so it'll be ready in another few weeks. But uh, we have a large corn harvest. We can do some major corn sales there. We look off in the distance, we see those colorful boxes there, and you probably recognize those as beehives. One of our elementary teachers is a beekeeper, and she helps us keep bees here. So we have lots of pollination and can educate students about uh, beekeeping and the importance of bees, etc., etc. Okay, we're gonna go for another little walk now this way. One of our major uh, improvements in the last couple of years is using mushroom compost to grow our food in. And so we spread this all of our field and make our hill beds out of that. This is get donated by Highline Mushrooms to our farm. They deliver by the semi-truck load and we've already this year probably put three or four, uh, well, maybe three semi-truck loads onto the farm. And we continue to get more from them whenever we can. And uh, it's very nutri uh, nutrient rich for plant growth. And also it helps to suppress weeds, which is a big issue at our farm and as any farm and so uh, but it keeps us from having to spread a lot or uh, spray a lot of pesticides or herbicides and instead we can just mulch over it and keep the weeds down that way this area over here we're going to kind of go from uh, the whole kindergarten all the way up to university range now at our farm where uh, these three rows behind you are three plantings of the berries done by the University of the Fraser Valley in, co in cooperation with us on this one, I see, I think, we have one of our first ripe blackberries. Mm, pretty sweet already. So blackberries are just coming in ready. We have a row of blueberries, which are not doing so well, unfortunately. But then our strawberries had a great strawberry crop again this year. And uh, so uh, you can see it's a lot of work to keep the lawns mowed and everything, but at least we get lots of great crops. We've got a few blueberries out of this, which it looks like here. So yeah, that's not bad. Mm, yeah. Anyway, it's been a great uh, joy to work with the University of Fraser Valley this year and in the last really uh, 10 years or so with our program where our students are actually getting university credit for the work they do with the, uh, the prof there as well as uh, taking courses at the same time as being in high school so they get their first step into university even though they're still in uh, grade 11 or 12. And so, uh, yeah, getting that uh, vertical uh, linkage up where they can start their university education uh, really means a lot to our program. At the same, in the same breath, uh, we also like to deal with the younger ages. So we can look at our final stop here at the farm. And 
So these five, six beds here are our elementary gardens. And here we, our class is post elementary class. As you can see, they're not growing a ton of stuff this year because of COVID, they couldn't come and plant this spring, but this fall they'll be back. And these nice raised beds are ideal for uh, students to work in because they're not too wide and students can actually spread out along the outside of them. So it's really great for elementary kids, lots of room for them to work and play and learn. Hey. And our students love to help mentor them. And um, yeah, it's, it's great to see uh, some days we have students from five years old all the way up to university level, uh, you know, 18 to 20 year olds uh, helping out here. And you can just see from my kids playing here, it's just a great place to come and hang out. And so again, we come back to where we started. You see our sign up here. This is our Sardis Secondary Farm. Hope you enjoyed the tour and uh, hope to have you visit us someday.